I'm David Stevens, a Christian science practitioner and teacher from Petaluma, California. Just uh, here to share some thoughts that I think may be helpful. Um, I know they've been helpful to me anyway, <laughs> with regard to the coronavirus issues that we're all dealing with these days. I think most of you are either chaplains or members of the prison population, um, maybe thinking, gosh, we're helpless in the middle of all of this, and uh, uh, very much caught up in the details of what to do, what not to do, what seems to be going on out there, and who's, who's doing what. It's pretty easy to do that, and forget God. In fact, I haven't heard God spoken about very much at all when I turn on the news. I was glad that the president, I guess, yesterday or the day before came out with a statement and just invited people to pray. Uh, I guess it was Sunday. There's a national day of prayer. And uh, for me, that's, that's the starting point. When I think about God, I'm, I'm thinking about God as infinite good, as all-encompassing power and presence of intelligence and love. And so the question for me is not, where is God in all of this? It's where is this in all of God or in the all that is God? Where is their discord in infinite harmony? I think we need to adjust our tuners a little bit to have more of a sense of the presence and power of God. It's our notion that we're separate or that we can't see or feel God's presence. Uh, I think that, that allows us to get immersed in the nitty gritties of problems. One of the biggest issues, obviously, these days is fear. You know, the fear of the uncertainty of things, the unknown. But we can choose not to. The more I understand about the all presence and all power of God good, the more I'm inclined to look there rather than, and put my trust there rather than putting my trust in fear. And I've come to the conclusion that I can turn away from it at any point. Just turn and walk the other direction, which is towards the presence of divine intelligence and love. I remember during the swine flu epidemic 10 or 12 years ago, um, I was traveling and speaking on Christian science. I noticed a lot of people coughing and wheezing as I went through the airports, and I didn't think too much about it. I had prayed for myself. I think at times I had prayed for everyone, but it wasn't really oriented, on, oriented towards that. I was just eager to get to where I was going. But by the time I got to my hotel room, I was just barely dragging myself in. I had all of the flu symptoms you could think of <laughs> and was thinking they're going to have to wheel me out on a gurney tomorrow morning to give this talk on Christian science healing. And then I just remember thinking, no, absolutely not. That's, that's not how this plays out. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to share some liberating ideas. And God's love for me enables and safeguards me in doing what I need to do. And I remember thinking about some verses from the Psalms, both in the 91st Psalm, where it says, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. To me, those angels are true thoughts from God, not the fear stuff, but the good stuff, the confirmation of that presence and power of good and that atmosphere of divine love. Another one was uh, from Psalm 139, which asked the question, whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. And I realized there wasn't any place I had gone or could go separate from God's presence. And I realized that everybody else was in that presence as well. I began thinking of my, of my true identity as a child of God and always under that, always operating within that atmosphere and law of divine love. 
I woke up in the middle of the night with my Bible and my copy of Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy on my chest, the lights were on, and I realized I felt completely well. This peace came over me and I fell asleep, that was it. And that was the end of the whole thing. I woke up the next morning completely free, didn't need a gurney to go <laughs> to give my lecture, and, and headed home with a much broader sense of love and care and concern for my fellow man, not concerned with the, regarding the problem, but remembering to identify them as children of God operating in that same divine atmosphere of good. We're all thinking about caring for one another, washing our hands more often, uh, bumping elbows rather than shaking hands maybe, and the social distancing, which is seems kind of funny, and but I get it, there's a kindness in that and an intelligence to a degree. But again, the things we do don't have to be run by fear. They can be, they can spring from intelligence and love. You know, Jesus was once asked critically by the Pharisees, I think it was, why his disciples didn't wash their hands before they ate. And he took the opportunity to explain to them that it wasn't what comes into the body that defiles us, but what comes out of the heart that defiles us. So it's, to me, it's more a matter of watching thought. Am I really conscious of and operating from a basis of love, uh, from an expectancy of good? We all have within us a capacity of spiritual sense and a built-in capacity as children of God to express those qualities. I was thinking about a line in Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures which says, outside the material sense of things, all is harmony. That just grabbed my attention. <laughs> outside the material sense of things. I spend a lot of time, and we all do, just kind of navigating, engaging everything according to the material sense of things. But I think it's true that it's that very material sense of things that includes all the problems, the limitations, that robs us of a broader view which enables us to see and feel God as that divine presence of goodness and love and enables us to find our own goodness and love. It's really liberating. It brings freedom to us regardless when we step outside the material sense of things. Well, what is that? Is it a vacuum? Is it a big blank? No, it's a spiritual sense of things. That's a term that Mary Baker Eddy uses in her book. And that spiritual sense, I find, is, is natural. It is that sense that allows us to feel the presence of those angels, to hear what God is is saying to us, the confirmation and affirmation of our safety, our well-being, and the guidance, uh, direction for our lives. It's truly liberating, and you have it as much as I do.